Hello everyone, my name is Jasmine Kaur and I'm a PhD student at Triple IT Delhi. I'm your TA for the course VLSI Design Flow RTL to GDS. Welcome to tutorial 11. In this tutorial, we will look at the various stages of chip planning that include floor planning, power planning and placement. So for this, we will be using Open Road app that we installed in the last tutorial. So now let us see what are the inputs that will be required by the open road tool to perform the chip planning so these are the files and folders example files and folders that were there in the open road test folder that we saw in the last tutorial so in this tutorial we will be uh, looking at the gcd example using nand gate 45 uh, library and this is G this is the verilog netlist that we will be using and gcd nand gate 45.sdz file is the constraint file that we'll be using so let us see uh, the library files so nand gate for in nand gate 45 folder we have these library files so nand gate 45 underscore typical dot lib, lib we will be using and the physical information of the technology files and the standard cells uh, will be in these uh, NAND gate 45 standard cell and NAND gate 45 tech, tech dot left files. So, uh, and the script that will be running is this gcd underscore NAND gate 45 dot tickle file. So, now let us look at uh, this uh, script file gcd NAND gate 45 tick dot tickle. So, in this file, firstly, we are sourcing some files so this helpers.tickle and flow helpers.tickle file contains the helper functions and this nangit 45.vars file contains the variable values defined in this then we are defining some variables like uh, design variable for the name of the design which is gcd the top module name that is gcd and we are in, uh, giving input synthesized verilog file and input constraint file using this uh, uh, using these variables then we are giving the die area and core area uh, this is given in uh, lx ly ux ui format so uh, what is this lx ly is it is the bottom most uh, bottom left corner coordinates and ux ui are the top right coordinates so knowing these two coordinate values, we can find the die area and the core area. Then finally, we are sourcing flow.tickle file. So uh, this file contains script for complete phys uh, physical design flow. So let us see what is there in this file. So in this file, we can see firstly, uh, we are reading the library files using read libraries. So this is uh, defined in flow helpers dot tickle. This, this is a procedure defined in this file. Then we are reading the verilog file and link design is used to flatten the design. Then we are reading the SDC file here. And next we can see floor planning is being done in this file. Then IO placement, macro placement, global placement, clock tree synthesis, detailed placement, global routing. So the complete flow of the physical design is being done in this flow, flow.tickle file. So what I have done is I have broken down this file into uh, subscripts so that we can see uh, step by step how things are happening. So let us see, I have created gcd nand gate 45 copy.tickle file in this we will be sourcing the different script files turn by turn. So firstly, we are doing flat floor planning. So let's source this flow underscore floor plan dot tickle file. So in this file, firstly, we, we are initializing the floor plan and uh, this site here defines the list of sites to make rows. So basically, uh, this, this is the unit tile that has the minimum height and width of a cell to be placed. So cells are placed in multiples of these sites. 
then we uh, we are defining the dye area and core area right and then we are writing the def file so this is design exchange format file that contains the physical design information and then we are sourcing the tracks underscore file type so in this source uh, tracks underscore file uh, we are adding grouting tracks to the floor plan and then remove buffers is used to remove the buffers that are inserted by the synthesis tool now we will be doing io placement using the place pins command here we are doing random pin placement and we are defining the horizontal and vertical layers that will be used then macro placement so if we firstly we will be checking if there are macros then we will place them using global placement and then we will place the macros and we will specify the hello and channel then the next step is tap cell insertion so tap cells and uh, end cap cells are added here which prevent latch up and guard against the manufacturing damage to cell gates cell gates that are close to the border and then we are writing the def file so let us run this first uh, first script open road minus gui for gui uh, option then we can create a log file using minus log option and then we give the input script that needs to be run. So gcd nand gate 45 copy dot tickle. So here we can see that we have a core area and we have a die area. Then these are the standard cell rows. So we can zoom in and the, these are the standard cell rows in which the standard cells have to be placed. If we zoom in further, so this unit tile here, this is this site. And then these are the IOs, IO pins and these IO pins are random for now. So we have placed them randomly in this step. Then, uh, also, we can see no macros have been created because the tool did not find any macro blocks in this design. Then after that, tap cell insertion. So we can uh, look, uh, have a look at the tap cells from this option in instances physical. So these are the tap cells. or we can say well taps and we can see that these are created at the boundary of the core let's check that so we can see this is the core and they are at the boundary of the core So next, let us go to the next step, which is power distribution network. So let us look at the flow underscore PDN dot tickle file. So in this file, we are firstly sourcing the PDN underscore CFG file. So what is this file? This file defines the global connections which are VDD, VSS, it defines the voltage domains, defines the power grids for standard cells and macros. And finally, this PDN gen, it builds the power grid. Then we are writing the def file for this. So now let us run this. So here we can see that power grids and uh, uh, the power distribution network has been created. So uh, we can see that in nets option here that uh, no signal and no clock nets are created yet, yet. And this, this is the power nets and these are the ground nets. So this is the complete, this is the complete power distribution network. 
Now moving on to the next step for global placement. So let's uh, source the global placement flow script. So let us see what is happening in there. So, uh, so firstly, we are setting global routing layer adjustment here. So, why is it being done is, it, it is used, uh, used by a global router during placement to estimate and avoid the congestions. So, uh, so it is basically a uh, congestion estimate being done here so before we can do the global placement. Then we are setting the routing layers for signal and clock. And uh, here we are setting the macro extension. That means we are setting the number of G cells or routing bins that need to be added to, to the blockages uh, boundaries from the macros. And now we are doing the global placement which is routability driven. Here we are defining the uh, density, uh, the target placement density, and we are adding the paddings the, to the left and right of the cells. Now we do the IO placement. Now this time the uh, IO placement is optimized. And now we can write a DB file and a def file. Then uh, in this step, we are repairing the maximum slew capacitance fan out violations and normalizing the slews. So firstly, we source the layer RC file. Uh, this is NAND gate 45.RC file, which contains the resistance and capacitance of each metal layer. Then we set the wire RCs for the signal and clock nets. This is used for uh, delay calculation, right? And then finally, we are setting don't use cells, which, uh, which are used to remove from the consideration by resizer. Then we are estimating the parasitics uh, in place after the placement. These will be considered during the design, uh, repairing of the design, which we are doing in this repair design. And we are giving the slew margin and capacitance margin. So what is this uh, repairing of design? What happens in this is we insert, uh, the tool inserts buffers on the nets to repair the maximum slew, maximum capacitance, maximum fan out violations, and also on long wires to reduce the RC delay. And it also resizes gates to normalize the slew. Then we are uh, repairing the tie fan out. So uh, when some netlist is any, uh, when in netlist, pin is connected to logic zero or one, then we can insert a tie cell whose gate is always tied to VDD or VSS. So that is the purpose of this here. And now let us run this. So we can see these uh, red blocks, these are the standard cells. So global placement of standard cells is done. And we can see um, we can see there is some overlapping of cells for now because we have just done the global placement and not uh, legalized the uh, placement. So there is some overlapping. And we can also see that these cells are not inside the standard cell rows that are uh, there. And now you can see these pins have also uh, changed their position. And now they are placed according to the optimizations, their optimized locations. Moving on to the next step. So next step is uh, for today's like uh, tutorial, the last step is flow detailed flow of detailed placement. 
So let us see this, uh, what is happening in this detailed placement. So first is uh, setting placement padding. So in this uh, placement pads are added on the left and right. Uh, this is done to leave room for routing in the uh, further steps. And then finally we do the detailed placement. And then we are reporting the different uh, setup hold uh, slacks and total negative slack. So different timing reports we are generating, right? And then we are uh, checking the report check types and we are finally writing the uh, def files and verilog file. Now let us this uh, run this step. Let us run this step. So now, as we zoom in, we can see now the standard cells, there is no overlapping there and they are now placed inside the, uh, L, uh, the legal standard cell rows, right? And uh, we can see the, uh, uh, the ground and power nets as well. So uh, this was all for today's tutorial. We will cover the next steps in uh, physical design that is uh, clock tree synthesis and uh, the uh, uh, routing step in the next tutorial. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.